Well, sir, it's a few minutes past 12 o'clock noon as we approach the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here, walking along the alley, homeward bound for dinner, we see Mr. Victor Gook and his son, Mr. Rush Gook. Let's fall in behind the gentleman and listen. Leland Richards claims he's going to give Annabelle Hemstreet a gunny sack full of marshmallows on her birthday. Does Leland admire Annabelle? Yeah. A gunny sack full of marshmallows sounds like a sweet, delicate, and fragile gift. Uh Uh-huh. When my girl's birthday rolls round, I think I'll present her with a coal scuttle full of gumdrops. Hmm. Or a trash bucket full of peppermints. Or an old sock full of oranges. Go right ahead and enjoy your joke. Not at all. Speaking of Leland Richards, he's about the biggest hearted guy I know. Leland Richards would give you the shirt Excuse off Excuse me. His... This is where we live. I know we live here. Why don't you turn in, then? You start turning in. All right. I will. If I'd been the one walking on the inside, I'd have turned in way back there. Sure you would. That's why Mr. and Mrs. Scott haven't got any grass in their yard. They can't expect any wonderful grass this time of the year. It's almost October. You're not the person to decide whether... There's nights here in the window. Uh-huh. He's a good boy. <laughs> okay, Uncle Fletcher. Fine, fine. Glorious day. Glorious day. Almost pasted nicer one upside the snoot at school this morning. We were standing in line waiting to take our turn at the drinking fountain, and the son of a gun... We've arrived th- home. May I suggest you open the door? son of a gun stepped on my heel. Done it on purpose. Hi. I said... Hello there, fellas. Oh, you're always saying hello to somebody, not to make a man scream. That's right, ma'am. We should quit saying hello. Makes hey, me so mad. don't go in the other room. Why not? Mr. Sludge is in there. Using the telephone? He's asleep. Go on. Yeah, on the Davenport. Well, what's the big idea? He was up all last night with a toothache. Never slept a wink. Worn to a frazzle. Well, why don't he go home and lay on his own Davenport? Miss Harris is doing some house cleaning today. Got the place all torn up. Mr. Sludge asked if he could... No, Rush. Dinner's not ready, is it? No, but you stay out here. I won't bother, Mr. Sludge. Well, what you want to go in there for anyway? I have to take our copy of Scott's Lady of the Lake to school this afternoon. I'd like to get it out of the bookcase before it slips my mind. Well, will you be quiet? I don't want... Where are you going? The newspaper in on the library table. Well, do you have to read it this minute? Well, I don't suppose I have to. Well, go get it, but for goodness sakes, don't wake up Mr. Sludge. Well, what do I want to wake up Mr. Sludge for? Come on, go, Pastor. Use your tiptoes. Use your tiptoes. <laughs> okay. There's nothing like using your tiptoes to while away a dull afternoon. Brutal Johnson loves to Cut come. out the talking. Cut out the talking. <laughs> okay. But, mercy me. Ain't that a man there on the Davenport? <laughs> Looks like it. Who can he be? I believe it's Miss Harris's rumor. Not Mr. Sludge. Sure. Oh, Sludge, you big chase. I'm able to hop up and clip you one upside the jaw. If he did, I'd take one of his legs in one hand and the other leg in the other hand and tear him into neat pieces, just like you tear a hunk of celery apart. Anybody can talk tough to a guy that's asleep. You're afraid to. Don't move a muscle, Mr. Sludge, or I'll lose my terrible temper. <laughs> you would dress him in a very harsh manner. <laughs> Think of the things you could say to the world's champion heavyweight if you caught him asleep. A person could be quite abusive. In fact, quit turning over on your side, Sludge. Yeah. When I say don't move a muscle, I mean don't move a muscle. You better lay still. Hey, you know the danger in this? No. Sleeping individuals often have their subconscious minds on the job. You tell them something and it kind of goes in their ears and sticks in their brains. When they wake up, they remember every word. Matter of fact? Our physiology teacher, Miss Shade, says so. Oh, uh, she's crazy. She ain't either crazy. I'll tell you another astonishing fact about sleeping individuals. Sometimes you can ask them questions and they'll answer you back. Try it on Brother Studge here. I think he's sleeping too sound. Try it anyway. How are you feeling, Mr. Sludge? Fine, thanks. And yourself? <laughs> You're a punk ventriloquist, girl. I never said anything. Try it again. I guess I won't bother. Say, girl, remember one time you and me were standing here and Mr. Donahue was on the Davenport? I just barely recollect the incident. Seems to me somebody went to work and drew a mustache on his upper lip. Yes. With a pencil. Pencil that had soft lead in it. Huh? Huh? Uh, do you happen to have a soft leaded pencil in your vest pocket now? I may have. Uh, hey, what's going on in here? Nothing. nothing. What you doing? Just standing, standing around. around. You're not interfering with Mr. Slatch. Of course, course not. not. What were you leaning over for, Rush? When? Just now. Well, I thought I seen a fly on Mr. Sludge. I was going to brush There's it off. There's no flies in this house. Go on back out in the kitchen. Let the poor fella have his rest. He was up all last night with toothache. 
He looks peaceful enough now. His long, silky lashes curtain the deep blue of his eyes, and his nostrils tremble ever so faintly. Note how his creamy complexion contrasts... Oh, I'm back out in the kitchen, both of you. I haven't got my newspaper yet. Well, get it. Come on, Willie. I haven't got my Lady of the Lake out of the book Will yet. you both kindly finish your business in here, please? Sure. sure. I'm going to dish up dinner in about three shakes, so don't fiddle. Okay. okay. And don't talk. Okay. There's something fascinating about a sleeping individual. Yes, indeed. Here we got a man. This man, when he's awake, is able to eat, drink, jump, kick, and scream. A good description. But here he is laying on our damn port like a lump of lead. Got no more sense than a bicycle. Yes. It's a strange thing. One minute a person can be hopping around gay as an oyster, and the next minute be no more good than my shoe. This morning, Mr. Sludge was walking downtown and chatting with his friends. Here, only a few hours later, he's nothing but pulp. Exactly. But if you stuck him with a pin, he'd jump right up and be as jolly as ever. I just bet he'd be jolly. Got a pin? <laughs> no. That's hard luck. I, um, got a pencil, though. Pencil? Pencil is very soft lead. Is that it there on the clip attached to your sweater? Yeah. Looks very much like the sort of pencil that was used by those wretched mischief makers who drew a mustache on Mr. Donahue's upper lip the day he was stretched out on this Davenport. Uh-huh. I have no sympathy for such pranks. Neither have I. Anybody that sinks so low as to draw a mustache on a poor fellow that was asleep is nothing but a contemptible cat. Worse than a contemptible cat. Of course. If a guy feels like perpetrating such a miserable deed, I suppose it's his own business. Yeah, that's true. If he chooses to take the highway to crime and evil doing, well, that's up to him. Naturally. I'm a great stickler for mine and my own affairs. Why, if some unprincipled wretch come in here this very minute with a pencil and drew a mustache on Brother Spudge, I'd never in the wide world move one muscle to interfere. No? I should say not. Well, uh, what you looking at? That picture over there on the wall... Never paid much attention to it before. Uh, how long you plan on looking at it? Oh, a minute or two. Uh-huh. Cruel, thoughtless person who decorated Pa Donahue's upper lip that time used a quick light stroke. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Makes a better-looking mustache. Yeah. He was especially thoughtful not to blow his breath in the face of the sleeping individual. Might wake him up. Uh-huh. Yes, sir, that's a mighty nice picture there on the wall. We ought to have more pictures like that. Yeah, we should. Next time I'm downtown, I think I'll drop in Hamilton's picture department and inquire God. if I have... Yes, my boy? Somebody has been in here drawing a mustache on Mr. Slide. No. Yeah. The rascals. Let's see. <laughs> Not a bad mustache, either. Oh, it's a good mustache. A fine mustache. But if I ever find the rotten crooks that perpetrated this hey, outrage... Man. Uh-oh. You excuse me and I'll accuse you. Is that the best way? Yeah. person has to run around after you fellas like a nurse with a couple tiny babies. We're on our way, kiddo. Well, I told you dinner was ready. Uh-huh. Well, Roscoe and well, myself... Why don't you come? Gov and I were just... What's going on here? Nothing. Nothing. We, we just... just... How would you like to go to somebody's house to sleep on their Davenport a little while and have people standing over you? Did you say dinner was ready, Sid? Rush, if your mother is announced dinner... Well, let's not stand around like oxen. Let's go into the who kitchen. Done who done what? I say, who done this? You mean who? You know what I mean. Who done it? Rush. Rush, I'm going to give you just... Gov drew this mustache? Yeah. Fit for a grown-up man that's supposed Rush to have... Rush did it. Gov did it. Don't hide behind Papa's skirts, George. Own up. You own up. Come on, tell your mother the truth. You tell her the truth. Vic, who done this? Rush. Gov. Rush. Gov. All right, fellas. Mm. Come on, eat your dinner. I see, my troubles are just beginning. I thought I had two men. Find out I got two five-year-olds. Come on. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block.